A really cool project has been approved near Tabor, Alberta, and it's going to be taking old oil and gas uh, well sites and turning them into solar projects. And to discuss that, uh, I'm going to be joined by Keith Hershey, who's with Well Renew. So welcome to the interview, Keith. Thank you, Markham. How are you doing today? I, I think this is, this is really exciting. So uh, why don't you give me a brief overview of the project, please? Yeah, sure. I guess the, the pilot that we're embarking on right now is we're taking a, um, between two and four orphan well sites in the MD of Tabor and uh, basically uh, using the land and the roads and, and power connection that's in going to those sites. The sites have already been, for the most part, reclaimed and we'll be putting in a small scale solar between 500 kilowatts to a megawatt per site. Well, I find that really interesting that you're going to be using the, inter the existing infrastructure because when I look at levelized cost of energy estimates, there's always a range uh, yes. per megawatt hour. And a lot of that range is determined by construction costs. So yes. it seems to me, if I'm correct in this, that if you use existing infrastructure that you don't have to build and you bring down those costs. Exactly right, Mark. I mean, you've hit the nail on the head. As you probably know, uh, if you look at solar in Alberta, or any, any jurisdiction, we were pushed towards very large projects because there's like a three to five year pre-development time. You're going through all your permitting and you're, you're getting your uh, uh, interconnection approvals and all this kind of thing. And that's the same amount of time and cost, whether you're using a one megawatt project or a hundred megawatt project. So people are driven to these really big projects to, to reduce that, that upfront investment. Um, and what we found is by reusing the infrastructure and hopefully, you know, we have some plan, um, tentative agreements in place to streamline uh, the uh, development cycle that we can compete with the large scale projects by doing repeatable mass produced small scale projects on existing sites. That, that's, that's very interesting. And the, another thing I found interesting was that some of the local businesses, farms and so on will be, uh, be using this, uh, uh, this electricity. Now, will it be cheaper than what they can buy from the grid? Yeah, that's a really good point. And you know, in Alberta, people often talk about the low cost of, of electricity. And I mean, it's really five, six cents a kilowatt hour for the energy. But what's happened in Alberta is that the transmission and the distribution costs have gone through the roof. Uh, Alberta has the second highest electricity cost of all of the Canadian provinces, only second to PEI, you know, much higher than Ontario. And it's really because it's two thirds distribution transmission. Um, one of the things that's happening in Tabor is there's big irrigation loads, like it's uh, major um, energy use peaks in the summer uh, to power all the irrigation systems. And the irrigation farmers are really being crippled by these high transmission distribution rates. And then also to add insult to injury, as the irrigation demand goes up, then there's calls to upgrade transmission and, and distribution infrastructure, which is gonna to add to their cost. Um, the idea of being able to put in these small scale kind of one megawatt solar projects strategically close to the load is really great because we're generating power in the same peak times as the irrigators need it. And um, we should be able to offset some of that transmission build out. Now that's fascinating because of course we, we saw some of the problems that California is having mm -hmm. because California solar uh, doesn't produce power in the evening when mm -hmm. at their peak demand. But you're saying that the farming community and their requirements and the peak output of the solar project will roughly coincide. Yeah, certainly it coincides seasonally. And the other thing, you know, the, the California duck curve is such a famous example, right? I mean, basically everybody's turning on their air conditioners just as the sun's going down in California. And um, in Alberta, we've got longer days in the summer. Um, and also there's the traditional energy use that's cyclic through the course of the day. And so basically at the time that businesses and, you know, homes are starting to power down their systems, then that's really the point in time where also the solar is coming down. So the solar, it turns out both hourly and seasonally to be a really good complement to, uh, to irrigation. So now let's talk about outside seasonality because of course um, we don't grow crops in Alberta in the wintertime and there's a lot right. of fair amount of sun in Alberta, especially down in the southern part where I'm Tabor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hearing a lot about how battery storage has become much more economic over the last little while. California is adding a lot of it and we've got mm -hmm. the world's, one of, well, I don't know if it's the world's biggest, but a very, very large project going forward in Alberta. Yeah. And so do you have plans to integrate battery storage into your projects going, uh, you know, in the near future? 
Yeah, long term, you know, it's definitely an important part of modernizing our grid. You're absolutely right about that. But one of the things that, uh, like our partner on this project is Irikim, Saint Man, which is partnership between St. Mary River, Raymond and Tabor Irrigation Districts. And as you probably know, they have small scale runner river hydro on the main irrigation canals. One of the things we've investigated with them is, you know, there's a lot of wind projects and solar projects going into southern Alberta. And the wind projects often produce energy at night when there isn't much demand. Um, and so one of the things we've been investigating with Irican is using um, pumped hydro storage um, to basically complement the renewable energy, intermittent energy that's going into southern Alberta. Um, so we see that, you know, we've done some cost comparisons and it looks like it's more economical than the batteries right now. But the batteries are kind of also transportable, as you know, and you can put them in different points in the grid as you need them. So I think in the next few years, it's definitely one of the things that we've been investigating. Uh, last question, Keith, but uh, I find that fascinating because at the small scale down at the community, uh, it seems like the technology now has become flexible enough and economical enough that really you can mix and match and design and come up with solutions that meet mm -hmm. community needs, which are you know will vary across province and by region within the province. Yeah, you're absolutely right. In fact, we're funded in this program by the Municipal Climate Change Action Center and the, the funding came under a competition that was called the uh, um, Municipal Community Generation Challenge. Um, so all 43 municipalities in the province competed to put forward what they thought was the best project and we ended up being one of two selected. Um, and um, you know, really what the hope is, as you're probably aware, there's a small scale and community generation regulation came in to streamline the process for smaller scale projects to get on the grid. So far, they haven't really worked as, as well as planned, um, but the hope is exactly what you're saying. I mean, there's really this opportunity to bring um, the, the power generation into the community's hands and to make it a more localized system. And this, I think, is really where the future is going. Keith, thank you very much for this. I, I, all the best with your project. I know that you uh, said in the press release anyway that you plan to do an, a number of these. Uh, this yes. is the first pilot. So good yeah. luck with on that and keep us updated as to the, the success of your project. Thank you, Mark. I mean, it's a pleasure talking to you.